Alright, cursed games, coming in at number 10 we have Charlie Charlie. So the Charlie Charlie challenge is adapted from a Spanish paper and pencil game called Yungo de la La Persia, the pencil game. I probably murdered that Spanish. Basically the premise of the game is to balance pencils on top of one another with no and yes written in the squares. Teenagers then call upon an alleged Mexican demon called Charlie. Players of the game say something like, Charlie Charlie are you here? The pencil then moves and people freak out. Why do the pencils move? Clearly because a demon has been summoned, not because of friction and gravity. There are a lot of videos of people playing the Charlie Charlie game and it almost always ends with screaming and running. Many YouTubers find themselves doing the challenge and they've garnered millions of views. Is it real? Well according to Mexican historians there is no demon called Charlie, but I dunno, any game that encourages summoning a demon makes me feel pretty sketchy. Coming in at number 9 we have Sad Satan. Sad Satan is allegedly a cursed video game found on the dark web. YouTube channel Obscure Horror Corner lived up to their name when they shared a scary screenplay of the game on their YouTube channel and honestly it looks really intense. To be honest it also sounds pretty intense and I don't like that. The player is walking down a dark alley and horrible radio signals start coming through. During the gameplay from time to time a blank screen would appear with strange markings. Reddit users decoded the font and said that it was saying things like kill 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 and I can track you. You. Finally at the end of the game it cuts to a black screen in which the phrase suffering doesn't end appears. Great! So basically this doesn't sound too good to me, I'll probably give playing this one a solid miss. Coming in at number 8 we have the 3 kings. I first heard about the 3 kings when I investigated the no sleep subreddit and apparently it is actually a very popular game these days. To be honest, popular or not, I don't like the sound of it, no no no. What you need to play the game is a large room, preferably a basement with no light light source. You are supposed to set up this space with two full length mirrors, three chairs and an item from your childhood. Once you're done with the setup, you are supposed to go to bed and set your alarm for 3.30am. At exactly 3.30 you are supposed to then get up. Now you can only play if when you go back to the large room you prepared nothing has changed. If anything has moved or changed this is a warning not to play that evening. You must sit in one of the three chairs at exactly 3.33am with a candle lit. Once seated you've got to look straight ahead into the darkness and never look into the mirrors or the candle. At this point you should see or hear a presence. Some people say that you'll begin to have a conversation with a king, a queen or a fool. It's complicated but apparently when playing this game it is possible to get stuck in an alternate dimension. Because sure. Coming into number 7 we have Midnight Man. According to a creepy pastor I read, the Midnight Man game dates back to an old pagan ritual and essentially is a game to summon a spirit. The game is played by a person writing their name on a piece of paper, pricking their finger to produce a small drop of blood on the paper, lighting a candle and taping the paper with your name on it to a wooden door. Now the door has to be wooden. Timing is important in this game, you have to knock on the door 22 times with the last knock coming at the stroke of midnight. The person then opens the door, blows out the candle, closes the door and relights the candle quickly. This apparently means that the midnight man is now in your house. Your job is to then avoid being caught by the midnight man who will scare you until 3.33am. Sounds like all of the fun I'd rather not be having. Coming in at number 6 we have Polybius. Polybius is a legendary arcade game and nobody knows if stories about it are true or simply the stuff of gaming urban legend. The story the story seems to have emerged in the year 2000 in Portland, Oregon and suggests some kind of government conspiracy. Basically the story goes that a black box arcade game started showing up in arcades across the city. Now the game didn't have any branding, it was simply black and mysterious, but people were intrigued and played it anyway. The game seemed to involve geometric patterns and eye wateringly bright colourful shapes. It seemed like the game was hypnotising people, making them sick or in some cases even making them disappear. After gamers played, men in black suits were seen servicing the machine, which led to rumours that it was part of the CIA's MK Ultra mind control pursuits. Storytellers named the game Polybius after a Greek historian who said that you should never report what you can't verify. Whether or not the story is true, it has become part of pop culture, with the Simpsons placing a Polybius machine in the background of a scene in 2006. Would you guys play it? 
let me know. Coming in at number 5 we have Pokemon's Lavender Town. Pokemon has a lot of wildly popular games, but did you know that part of Pokemon Red and Green might be cursed? The music that plays in Lavender Town in the game not only matches the weirdly trippy purple graphics, but allegedly sparked an alarming number of child suicides in Japan. The music is undoubtedly spooky, horror blog bloody disgusting hailed it as one of the most terrifying childhood memories for gamers. In terms of the music, the chords are very very jarring, but I have to say, it is weirdly calm. Whatever is going on, like even if it's cursed or not, I don't really want to listen to that music for very long, it kind of gets inside your brain. According to a creepypasta that surfaced in 2010, the music compelled over 100 Japanese children to kill themselves, leaving others with weird behavioural outbursts. Others suffered simple things like nosebleeds and headaches. Either way, I don't like it. This whole phenomenon became known as Lavender Town Syndrome. So the legend may have some scientific truth, apparently the high pitched bionaural beats tapped into the brains of children in a way that could affect their moods. It seems that Pokemon themselves were even worried, they've re-recorded the music for the 2017 Pokemon Go Halloween special, so maybe Pokemon bosses were trying to lift the curse, or maybe they fancied something new. I love a good board game, but you would not catch me playing with an Ouija board anytime soon. Now that's coming in at number 4. Ouija boards are totally messed up, I'm sure you know what they are, but for those of you that don't, it's a board with letters of the alphabet on it, as well as yes and no in the top corners, numbers, the words goodbye, and assorted symbols and graphics surrounding the board. Now the board is used to communicate with spirits, although it originated as an American parlour game. Some spiritual believers will tell you that playing with an Ouija board to contact the dead can lead to demonic possessions, which doesn't sound ideal. Ooh, maybe we should do the top 10 scary Ouija board stories, I'm so down for that. Coming into number 3, we have a classic game, we've got Bloody Mary. Bloody Mary is a quintessential game from our childhoods, but that doesn't mean I'd recommend playing it ever. Is it kids just freaking each other out, or is it a cursed game? Bloody Mary is said to appear in a mirror when her name is chanted. Now back in old, old, old folklore, the ritual was used to show a woman a glimpse of their future husband's face, although if they saw the Grim Reaper instead of their husband, it would mean that they would likely die before they got the chance to marry. In modern times, the legend goes that if you summon Bloody Mary, she will scratch out your eyes, steal your soul, drink your blood, or at the very least scream at you. There is a similar game legend called Hanako San in Japan. Speaking of Japan, next up you should never play Hitori Kakorunbo. This is coming in at number 2, and this is basically a Japanese hide and seek game. But you play it alone, or alone with a spirit. So what you need to play this game is a stuffed animal with arms and legs, it has to have a name, for example, Twinkle. Sadly, you cut Twinkle open, removing all of the stuffing and replacing it with rice and some fingernail clippings. Yum. You then sew up Twinkle back again, wrapping the leftover thread around the toy's body. You then put the stuffed toy in the bath and say, for the first game, I am going to be it. Then you close your eyes, count to ten, then you're supposed to stab the toy and say I won. Still with me? You then announce that the toy is going to be it next and you go and hide. For some reason, it's very important that you hide with a glass of salt water and if you feel scared, you have to put some of that salt water in your mouth. When the game is over and the toy hasn't found you in an hour or over, you go back, spit the salt water on the toy and burn it. Sounds like a lot of hassle to me and to be honest I'd rather play Catan. Finally, coming into number one, I would never ever ever recommend going anywhere near this game, we have Blue Whale. Blue Whale is an awful social media game that seemed to originate in 2016 and encourages players to induce self harm and later commit suicide. which horrendous. This so called game takes place over 50 days, with each day a new challenge. The game was linked to 130 teenage deaths in Russia alone, with one girl, 15 year old Yulia Konstaninov, posting a picture of a blue whale on her Instagram before jumping to her death. This spate of deaths were not just in Russia alone, countries across the world have reported deaths of young ones as a result of this sick game. So guys that was the top 10 cursed games you should never play, have any of you ever played one of these games? I certainly hope not. Please don't! Ever. Stick to what you love, like chess, or the sims, or even fortnite if that's your jam. Games without demons. At number 10, this game killed half a million people. 
it's Bo. Bo was a board game that involved a 14 face dice and some serious strategy. Bo was an absolute banger of the Han dynasty, so we're talking 206 BC to around 220 AD. This is a long time for a game to be surviving and thriving. Bo lost its popularity when it led to a whole host of untimely deaths. Bo, well, Bo hasn't been played in 1,500 years as a result. So basically, here's the story why. Two ancient Chinese kingdoms were brought together when two men played Bo together. Louis Shan played Prince Kui, but as Shan won the game, Kui got very angry and threw the heavy board at the visitor's head, killing him. This was enough to anger Shan's father, who declared war on the kingdom, marching half a million troops towards the capital. What ensued was a bloody war that killed hundreds of thousands of soldiers and civilians and well since then the game has basically been retired probably for the best. Coming in at number 9 we have EA's Madden NFL. I have to say that I've never actually played this game, I've played Pez but that's like football football. The NFL is the National Football League, one of America's favourite sports leagues to watch. This game allows players to play as their favourite North American sports stars on the PS4 and Xbox. So this game is not so much cursed for the people at home that play it than it is for the people unlucky enough to have been on the cover of it. The game came out in 1999 and over the past 19 years, 15 of the cover stars have befallen injury or misfortune in some unexpected way. This list includes Barry Sanders, Michael Vick and Rob Gronkowski. The rumours of the game were so strong that EA have even publicly denied that there's a curse and I feel like once they mention the curse, there's definitely a curse. Doesn't make me feel any better. Ok, next up at number 8, this game has driven people mad. We have $10,000 magic squares. If you like difficult puzzles, you'll probably have heard of if not even played with magic square puzzles. These puzzles work by each direction of squares in a line creating the same sum. Now it works very well with 4x4, 5x5, 6x6, 7x7, so on and so forth. But at the moment nobody has been able to create a 3x3 three three magic square that works. In 1996, Martin Gardner, a mathematician, offered $10,000 to anyone who could generate one, but well over 20 years later, nobody's been able to do it. Many have tried and they've literally sent themselves do lally in the process. $10,000 or your sanity? I know which I'd prefer. Coming in at number 7 we have Lady Spades. Lady Spades is kind of like a bloody Mary, but actually worse. The idea with Lady Spades is also to summon an angry, probably dead woman, although Lady Spades does come with a bit of a positive. If you manage to successfully summon the spirit, you can make a wish. But like with all occult games and assorted demonic summonings, Lady Spades comes with a few cons too. If you in any way annoy or upset the spirit, not only will she not grant you your wish, she will make the opposite happen. And she may even possibly haunt you, so probably not worth the risk. The stakes with Lady Spades are pretty high and I'd have to say, I don't want to dig with them. Coming in at number 6 we have Taboo the Sixth Sense. There is a reason that Taboo the Sixth Sense was taken off the shelf and that reason is it was probably cursed. In 1988 the game was for the NES console and was kind of like a tarot reading future predicting game. Players would enter their name, an age and a question and it was kind of maybe like a bit more of an in detail death clock or magic 8 ball combined. This game would predict your future by giving you a videographic tarot reading. It seems that there might have been something more mystical going on here though as the game reportedly accurately predicted the tragic deaths of some of its young players. Also. Can we just listen to the opening music? Like, clearly, this game is cursed. Again, let's have a listen to the music when the tarots are being shuffled. I don't like it, not one bit. Number 5 we have Tunnels. 
Tunnels is another mirror game and by now you should basically know that all mirror games are pretty damn cursed. For this one, you're supposed to set up two big mirrors facing one another and stand in the middle. So basically, you stand in the middle looking into the front facing mirror and counting how many frames you can see over your shoulder in your reflection. Like mirror after mirror after mirror after mirror. It's probably enough to send you mad by actually just looking at yourself reflected that many times. Anyway, you're supposed to look out for movement in the frames as many of the yous reflected are thought to reflect yous from other dimensions. It's all a bit mind bending. But basically, so it goes, one of the versions of you may bring something bad from their dimension. You don't want to summon that kind of thing and also, you may now exist in this world and be good, but you might not be good in all of the universes, so probably best to just leave this one alone. Coming into number 4, we have the voodoo doll board game. Whose idea was it to invent a voodoo doll board game? I'm honestly not sure black magic lends itself to gaming. Many believers in voodoo magic will tell you that actually, it's not something to be toyed with. Nonetheless, Kappa Games have brought out a game not so ironically called Cursed that includes 4 voodoo dolls that lets you place curses on other players. Now the game is part card, part pin in effigy. Classic. If you have the fewest pins in your voodoo doll when someone reaches 10 pins, then you become the voodoo king or queen and you win. While this does sound like good harmless fun, and actually I now have to admit I kind of want to play it, I'm not sure that we should be messing with voodoo. Coming into number 3, we have an online game called White Enamel. So White Enamel is clearly cursed, or haunted, or both. At this point it's pretty much of a much, right? There's definitely some bad juju here and I don't want to be a part of it. So this web point and click seems to be some kind of horrifying online game or interactive movie or something. I just don't like it. When the site launches, you're overlooking a town. You can then explore parts of it, and it seems to be a sprawling mental asylum with scary sounds and scary rooms. There is one part where you can draw on the walls in blood. Also, the page loading screens are needles that lose fluids as if we, the end viewer, are being injected. I don't like that. Don't inject me. Stay away from me. When on this website, I noticed that my browser was telling me that it was not secure, so either this game will curse you or curse your computer in the form of a virus. Either way, I think I'm good. I'm just gonna stay away from this one. Coming in at number two, we have Yahtzee. You might not know this, but Yahtzee is one of the top board games to cause domestic violence. There have been a number of Yahtzee related bust ups and even some deaths. For those of you unfamiliar with Yahtzee, it is a random chance dice roll game in 13 rounds. 13. Hmm, this is a pretty cursed number if I ever heard one. Basically, it seems like this game evokes a lot of strong feelings. Notably, a nine year old called the police when a game of Yahtzee devolved into a brutal fight between his parents. His drunken father hit his wife with a wine bottle, and it seems that she also resorted to violence. The pair were questioned by the police, and when they arrived on the scene, the child was taken away into protective custody. Another Yahtzee game led to a Florida man choking his wife, and and another Christmas game of Yahtzee led to the notorious killing of a mother of three by her children. They put a bag over her head and then hid her body in the shed over the entirety of winter. So Yahtzee, I don't know, I just don't think it brings out the best in people and maybe you shouldn't play it. Finally, coming into number one, this is a bit of a Scottish mystery and we all know I love a good spooky legend, especially when it comes from Scotland. That's right, at number one we have the Lewis Chessmen. I actually love this story and I love chess, although maybe I wouldn't fancy playing with this set for fear of what would happen to me. So the story goes that in 1831, a high tide exposed a cave on the coast near Uig on the Isle of Lewis off North Scotland. Ah, I'd love to be there right now. Scotland. Shout out. In that cave, a local labourer found a chest. Thinking it may contain treasure, he bust it open and found a different kind of treasure. Chess pieces dating back to the 1200s, so a then 600 year old game. Like, it's pretty intense. The pieces were made from walrus tusk ivory and are very, very, very expressive little pieces. The labourer was afraid of them when he saw them, initially running away thinking they were evil fairies. 
His wife screamed at him and sent him back to retrieve the pieces, which quickly became valued in the community. Sadly, bad luck befell the Highlander who found them. Most of them now sit in the British Museum in London, however the urban legend goes that guard dogs and police dogs that enter the building will not walk past them. The chess pieces are thought to have come from Norway, so perhaps they have some kind of Viking Norwegian curse hanging over them. I love it. Coming in at number 10, we have One Man Hide and Seek. In Japan, this game is known as Hitoru Kakurenbo. I might have said that wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you though, your stuffed toy will never be the same again. So, what you need here is a stuffed animal, but it has to have arms and legs. So, think bear rather than crocodile. Also, it has to have a name. For example, Ted the Dread. Basically, you cut Ted the Dread open, remove his stuffing, replace it with rice, and then some fingernail clippings. Creepy. You then sew the bear back up, wrap it, thread it, do all of that kind of stuff, put it back together. You then put this stuffed toy in the bath and say, for the first game, I'm it. You then count to ten with your eyes closed, then you're supposed to stab the toy and say I won. Sounds very dramatic. You then announce to the toy that it is going to be it, and then you have to go and hide. For some reason it's important that you hide with a glass of salt water and if you feel scared, put some of that in your mouth. When the game is over and the toy hasn't found you in an hour, fingers crossed, you go back, spit the salt water on the toy and burn it. Bye Ted! Honestly, it all sounds like a lot of hassle to me. Ah yes, at number 9 we have a classic, it's the Ouija board. Tale as old as time, right? Do you guys even need me to explain this one? Can we just move on to number 8? No? I have to say the words? Okay then. An Ouija board is a board with printed letters, numbers and signs, plus the words yes, no, good and bye. It is used to summon spirits and communicate with them. Famously, bad spirits have indeed been summoned. Interestingly, you can actually buy an Ouija board in a lot of mainstream game shops. Why buy one when you could make one yourself? Coming into number 8 we have Charlie Charlie. Charlie Charlie is a game I guess, a bit like the Ouija board but it's way more DIY. A person balances pencils on top of one another with no and yes written in squares. Charlie Charlie can't be used to summon any demon though, it seems that the infamous Charlie is the only one that will appear. And again, I'm not sure you want to meet him. Players of the game say something like, Charlie Charlie are you here? And then the pencil moves and teenagers freak out on YouTube. That's the trend. So why do the pencils move? Clearly because a demon has been summoned, not because of friction and gravity. Demon. Coming in at number 7 we have the living doll. Do you know what? I really don't like a creepy doll. I don't. In fact, I feel like you shouldn't have dolls over the age of 10. Just get rid of them because they'll probably haunt you. They pop up everywhere and they're always causing paranormal havoc. Get those dolls out. So Living Doll is like a cocktail of paranormal game fusion. It's got a lot of scary game tropes. Candles, sticks, mirrors, hiding, a doll. So here you're supposed to put a doll and a candle between two mirrors and say a little incantation. You then blow out the flame and wait for the doll to come and find you. If it finds you, then bad news bears. You're supposed to hide for around an hour and try not to get found. If you remain unfound then good, congratulations, you survive. You then return to the doll which may have moved. Pour salt on it and put it in a cupboard overnight. That ought to do it. Coming into number 6 we have Midnight Man. Midnight Man is a modern rehashing of an old pagan ritual and is essentially a game to summon a spirit. I feel like all of these games summon spirits you know. To play you write your name on a piece of paper. You have to prick your finger and produce a small drop of blood and put it on the paper. You then light a candle and then you tape the paper with your name on it to a wooden door. It has to be wooden apparently. So. Timing is very important here. You have to then knock on the door 22 times, with the last knock coming exactly at the stroke of midnight. You then open the door, blow out the candle, close the door, relight the candle. To me, it's all a big faff. This apparently means that the midnight man is now in your house. Your job is to avoid being caught by the midnight man, who will try and scare you until 3:33 a.m. No more, no less. Honestly. I'd much rather just be in bed having a good sleep, it sounds like way too much aggro. Whatever you do, don't say his name five times unless you want to play the game, in which case go ahead. That's right guys, at number 5 we have Candyman. Candyman, 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 actually do you know what I think I'll stop there. The Candyman is allegedly a murder victim with a hook for a hand, like Captain Hook, one of my favourite characters ever. He's mean. If you say Candyman's name five times then you will summon him. The only issue aside from summoning a demon is, you know. He's angry. He probably wants you to die. There is a movie made about it. Have you seen it? 
Let me know. Coming into number four, we have The Devil's Dog. Yet another summoning game, although this one doesn't require a mirror. Shocker. If calling forth the hounds of hell is high up on your to do list, then you'll be pleased to know it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is close your eyes, although allegedly the game works best in a group of four with one person in the middle. Alone or together, you close your eyes and hunch into a little ball and say, Devil's Dog, Devil's Dog, Satan, bring me Devil's Dog, over and over again until you feel scratch marks on your back. You'll likely even see them. This way, you'll know that you've been marked by the hellhounds. Apparently, they'll provide you with protection, but you'll also be cursed, so, you know, again, Tien Katan? Anyone? Coming into number three, we have Mirror Tunnels. Mirror Tunnels is a classic parallel universe game. For this one, you're supposed to set up two very big mirrors facing one another, and then you physically stand in the middle. You stand looking in the mirror and count how many frames you can see over your shoulder in your reflection, like mirror after mirror after mirror after mirror, kind of like that bit in Black Swan. It's actually, honestly, probably enough to send you mad. So you're supposed to look out for movement in the frames. You should be standing still, but one of your reflections might move in another dimension. Honestly, to me it's all a bit mind bending, but basically, so it goes, one version of you in a different dimension may bring something bad to your current dimension. Do you know what? I've gone cross-eyed, I feel like we need to move on. It's too much. Although I will say, in every world in which you exist, are you always gonna be good? Honestly, probably better just to leave this one alone. Okay, this is another scary game that comes from Japan, and to me that makes it a little bit scarier. We have the bath game. Also also known as Daruma San, the bath game involves summoning a grotesque ghost, and then you gotta stop it from catching you. Again, I'm sensing a theme here. This is like very normal for paranormal games, right? Honestly, summoning a demon in the bath isn't my kind of party. I'd rather have a candle and a glass of wine and a good book, but whatever floats your boat. It seems that this game involves taking a bath at night, in the dark, and sitting facing the taps. You're supposed to wash your hair and then repeat the words, Daruma San fell down over and over again. You've got to keep your eyes shut, but you'll feel a presence in the bath with you. When you feel the presence, you should ask, why did you fall in the bath? When you feel like the presence finally leaves you, you've got to get out of the bath but leave the water where it is, don't drain it. The next morning is when the game begins. The ghost of Daruma will follow you. She'll get closer as the day goes on, but you cannot let her catch you. When you see her over your shoulder, you must shout Kitta, which means I cut you loose and then perform a karate chop. Kitta. I mean, that sounds fun, but honestly, the whole thing sounds pretty pointless. Why spend a day escaping a demon when you could just, you know, be having a good day? Pray for devils have no reason. Satan waits to curse your ways. Have you seen it in his eyes in the sunset? Have you wonder if he's laughing when he plays? That's right, coming into number one, we have the devil's game. Great. So I found that terrifying description on a game listed on creepypasta.com, and it seems that the game has a 9.1 out of 10 rating from over 5,000 votes so it must be scary. The game allegedly allows you to speak with the devil, and if you do it right, I quote, there's a fair chance you'll walk away scot-free. Good. The purpose of the game is not to make a deal with the devil, but just to ask him things. What type of things? Well, the post reads that he could very well be able to predict the winning numbers of tomorrow's Powerball, for example, or tell you what deadly undiagnosed condition might be afflicting one of your loved ones. How do you play? Well, the creepypasta says that the demon can be summoned at a church at midnight, but it works even better on a new moon, a full moon, Friday the 13th, Halloween, etc. You will, you guessed it, need salt. Seven white or red candles, some matches, red string, a mirror. You cannot bring any electronic devices into the room, as apparently that is not something that the devil is okay with. Apparently all you have to do is light the candles and stare into the mirror and will the devil to come. When he appears, one is supposed to challenge him to a game of question and response. The best way to get a truthful answer from him, according to the creepy pasta, is to accept a dare from him. Now I don't know about you, but I will not be doing any dares set to me by the devil. Starting off with number 10 is the elevator game. This one is extremely popular in Japan, and I feel like Japan just gets creepy stuff right like 99.9% .9 of the time, so I trust them. Either way, the point of this game is to maybe transport to another world or parallel universe of sorts. To play, you have to be in a building that has at least 10 floors, and you have to be the only one in the elevator at all times. To start the game, you have to go to a sequence of floors in a specific order, but if any random 
random person gets in the elevator while you're doing this, you have to start all over again. So it is a bit of a mission. So the order is the fourth floor, then the second, then sixth, then second, then tenth, and then finally the fifth. If a woman enters the elevator while you're on the fifth floor, do not look at her, don't speak to her, no eye contact, no nothing. This woman is not human and will keep you with her forever if you have any interaction with her. Once she enters, press the first floor and then the elevator will go up or down as it pleases and it should take you to the 10th floor. At this point, leave the elevator straight away. The woman will ask you in an inhuman high pitched voice where you're going or what's wrong. Do not answer her, just go. If you exit the elevator and it's dark, your phone doesn't work and you see a red cross outside one of the windows, then you've reached the other world. Congratulations. And the only way to get back to our world is to repeat all the steps you did to leave it, but if you reach the first floor and the door opens but things seem off, even if a speck of dust is out of place, then do not exit the elevator because you will die. Apparently this is what Eliza Lamb was doing in the elevator CCTV footage of her right before she died. And I've seen that footage, but I didn't know about the game at the point and I was like wow. Coming in at number 9 is Dry Bones. So if you like hide and seek, you're gonna like this one or maybe you won't depending on how much of a scaredy cat you are. I definitely am, but yeah. So Dry Bones is like hide and seek demon edition. Great, must they just interject in everything we do. So you can only play in near midnight and you start off by getting a candle and a match. At precisely 12.01am you have to go to your bathroom and stare at the mirror while lighting the candle. Keep the match burning until it goes out completely and then say I am aware of your presence and I welcome you into my home. Come now. And this is essentially the point you're inviting a demon into your house and if you've made it this far this is the part where you run for your freaking life and hide like your life depends on it. Cause it high key does. To survive the game you need to stay hidden till 3am. Once the clock hits 3, go to the largest room in your house and say thank you for playing but you must leave now, you are no longer welcome. If you hear a groaning sound right after that then the demon will leave your house and give you a prize of your choosing. I don't really know how this bit works, like do you have a conversation with the demon, does it magically know what you want, I don't really know. But if you don't hear a groaning sound then that means the demon wasn't satisfied with how you played and let's just say you'll face a fate worse than death. So in conclusion, just don't lose. Easy. At number 8 we have 3 kings. Now this game actually came from the no sleep subreddit thread which we all go and explore when we're you know just feeling a type of way. Either way in order to play you need 3 chairs. 2 have to face each other and there has to be a mirror on each one. The third chair gets placed in the middle of the 2 chairs and that one is your throne making you the king. Hello your highness. <laughs> the mirrors constitute as your queen and your fool but you don't know which one is which and mind you this all has to be done in the dark. And keep in mind from the queen and fool's point of view, you're also either their queen or their fool. I said it was called three kings, right? There have to be three kings. At 3.30am, sit on the throne with a lit candle facing one of the mirrors. Hold the candle, stare into the darkness and start the game. The whole point of the game is to literally transport your consciousness to a whole other dimension or get to the shadow side. People have claimed they've had conversations with themselves in an out of body introspective experience or manner. You become able to to look at your past and present through new eyes. Others have said the whole thing feels like a lucid dream almost or meditation which are two very different experiences so I guess it really just depends on what you're like as a person. Let me know if you try it, I'd be very interested to know if you thought it was a lucid dream or meditation. Filling our number 7 slot is concentrate. Now I totally get why a lot of people would want to play this one and I also get why people wouldn't so let me know which side you fall on. So this is actually classified as a scary sleepover game but I'm like which 15 year old is going to want to play this. I would not have been doing this at 15, but that's me. Either way, if you're the one playing, you need to close your eyes and sit on the ground while a friend sits behind you reciting a dark poem about babies crying and people dying. The poem is long as hell, I'm not going to stand here reciting the whole thing for you, but you can google it if you want to play. While they're reciting it, the person has to be lightly tapping the back of the person who's actually playing. They then imitate murdering you in multiple ways, get creative here people, you know, get Get, get those slit throats in there. And then finally, your friend has to push you over from your sitting position. By the end of this whole experience, you should feel like you're in a trance of some kind, and this trance essentially allows you to see how you yourself will end up dying. Apparently, you'll see a colour of some kind, and that colour corresponds to a way of death. Again, you can find it on Google. Hey man, 
fans, some people just want to know about the end and others don't, to each their own. I think I, I would not want to play this game, I just, I don't want to know how I go, it can just remain a mystery, I don't want to predict it, I don't want to know. Now at number 6 is Baby Blue, and this is a game you actually play on your own, so maybe on a lonely Saturday night if your friends ditch you, you can play this not. The purpose of the game is to basically have a baby appear in your arms, and I know you're hoping for a cute little egg of a baby, but that is not the baby you'll be getting. How to play? Go into your bathroom alone, turn the lights off and close the door. Isolation? Check. Next, look into the mirror and cradle your arms like you're already holding a baby. Remember to support the head people, that's very important. Next, you have to say baby blue, blue baby 13 times. When you're done, you're meant to feel the weight of a baby in your arms, and in some horrible variations of the game, you're meant to flush the baby down the toilet. And you have to do this quickly because if you don't, a woman appears inside the mirror screaming at you, telling you to give her baby back to her. The woman can actually come out of the mirror and physically physically hurt you if you don't flush the baby quick enough, so get to flushing. I really don't see the appeal of this game at all, I'm not trying to get scratched or killed just for summoning a fake baby, nah B. Nah. Coming in at number 5 is the closet game. Now I don't know who in their right mind would actually want to play this, but I don't judge, so if you want to play it, go right ahead. Now the sole purpose of this game is to summon a demon into your home, whether that's to haunt it, to just spread bad juju around you, I don't know, maybe you hate your parents and you want to piss them off, maybe you're lonely and a demon seems like good company to you, I don't know. To start the game you have to stand in your closet with the door closed with an unlit match in your hand. You then have to say, show me the light or leave me in the darkness. Dramatic, I know. After saying this, you should hear a very faint whisper of some kind, and when you do, you have to light the match ASAP Rocky. That is key, you guys. If you don't do it quickly enough, the demon you just called upon can suck you into a pit of eternal darkness forever. That's just really not the vibe we're going for here. So light the match on time, open the closet door, and step out slowly, and voila. Your room or house should now be haunted, or protected, or cursed by a demon. But just a safety tip, if you do play this game, you should never look inside your closet without light after it. And if you accidentally leave your closet door open at night, you'll definitely be able to see the demon's red glowing eyes watching you from inside. And if you want that, then knock yourself out, but yeah. At number 4 is the answer man. Now this is another one from Japan, and it's a bit of an urban legend. Apparently the game invokes an evil spirit if done correctly, so if that sounds like your jam, then listen up. Now with this one, you have to play with 10 people, so if you don't have 10 friends, I certainly don't, then you can't play the game. I'm sorry, you loner. So step one is to sit in a circle and you all have to have your phones on you. On the count of three, or just at the same time, every person has to call the person on their left and then listen. Since everyone's calling each other all at the same time, everyone should hear the busy ringtone and no one's call should be answered. But one call will be. If your call gets answered, that is the answer man. If you get him on the phone, you can ask him absolutely anything and he will answer it truthfully and rightfully. But with every question you ask, he gets to ask you a question too that you have to answer. If you answer his questions wrong or don't answer them period, then a gnarled bony hand will appear out of the phone and tear off a piece of your body. Honestly, I'm down to play this game as long as my call isn't the one that gets answered. I don't mind being, you know, like a spectator to the mayhem. I don't want to be involved, but like I'll be eating popcorn and watching everything unfold. Safe over there. Following at number three slot is the dark reflection ritual. And contrary to the title, of it, it still is a game, not just a ritual, so don't worry, I didn't snake you. So the whole point of this one is to boost your luck, but to do that, you're gonna have to go through a night of terrible, terrible luck to get there. You can play this game by yourself if you're ballsy or in a group. If you're not, I would definitely play it in a group, because personally, there are strength in numbers and I'm not trying to die, or at least I'm not trying to die first. So you play by finding a mirror, a small handheld one is the best one to have, and you have to look at your reflection in the eyes for a few seconds. While you do this, you have to focus all your bad negative energy and breathe it onto the mirror till it fogs up completely. At that point, you quickly hold the mirror to a burning flame to create a black smudge on it. After that, the rock star can come out of you a bit because then you get to smash the mirror, which is a lot of fun. But your rock star dreams are going to end very shortly after that because the rest of the night will be hell. Bad luck will follow you and get worse and worse and more dangerous as the night goes on. Be on your guard, try not to die. And if you survive till the sun rises, then you've basically won at life. The game is meant to give you success in everything you do very shortly after, and to be honest, this game is sounding real tempting to me right now. Be right back.
Now at number two is the telephone ritual. This one's extremely dangerous, so you really need to proceed with caution on this one. I mean, then again, they all are. So what you need is a phone, a salt, a flashlight, but you can also use the light on your phone, and an amulet for protection. But that one's optional. I mean, how many people have a handy dandy amulet just lying around? I certainly don't. So this one can only be played alone and only at night. After midnight, when you're home alone, turn off all the lights in your house and make your way to your bathroom. Scatter salt around the toilet door and make a sort of barrier of salt outside it and then lock yourself inside. Use the flashlight to light up the surface of water in the toilet bowl and just keep staring at the water. And please try not to or something in there beforehand because that's just going to make for a very unpleasant game. While still staring into the bowl, call your house phone and let it ring and don't hang up. And at this point, one of two things can happen. If you start seeing the surface of the water change or you hear a noise from inside the house, then hang up a sap and scatter salt all around yourself. Now the second thing that can happen is that if someone answers your call, then hang up straight away, get the hell out of the toilet, put salt around the house phone and hopefully you'll be safe in that moment but not for long. To be on the safest side, just sprinkle salt all around your house after this. But the point of the game is that apparently the ghost of an ancestor or a spirit that haunts your house is meant to answer the phone and kind of just be in your house. I'm honestly not trying to awaken any demon ghost entity that lives in my house. You can just stay in hibernation, thank you. And finally, at number one is the picture game. If you're a paranormal ghost lover, then saddle up because this one is for you. And there are many rules to this one, so pay attention attention please and thank you. Any number of people can play and the point is to catch a ghost or entity on camera. You have to start the game at midnight in a quiet room. Out of string or rope, make a circle by tying the ends together and place this rope circle in the middle of your chosen room. Place a glass in the middle of the rope circle and fill it with wine or any alcoholic drink really. Then everyone should sit in a circle around the rope and have a mirror in front of them but the reflective part has to be facing the ceiling. A lot of rules I know. But that's just just the setup. Now the game actually begins. Everyone has to close their eyes, hold hands, and one after the other say, I trust you. Not all at once, one after the other. After everyone's done that, everyone has to say, the door is open, please come in, three times in unison, and then you can open your eyes. With a camera, every person has to say, I caught you, then take a picture of the middle of the circle. Don't preview the photo, just say the words and take it. Then pass the camera around and repeat till each person has taken three three pictures, so the camera's gone around the circle three times at that point. At any point, if anyone starts feeling like vomiting or begins to cry, do not let them take any pictures, just make them pass the camera on. Once you've done all that, put the camera down, close your eyes again, and say it is time to go home three times in unison. Each person has to then turn their mirror upside down, put the lights on, and use some sharp tool to cut the rope circle. Empty the drink into the earth, and review the pictures, and prepare to be shocked. If you do end up doing this, please show me if you see anything weird on your camera film, like I really want to know. Camera film? We're in the digital era. Your SD card. <laughs> and that's it for today's video guys. I'm a huge board game fan, but I haven't played games like this in a really long time. Honestly, the only borderline scary game I tried when I was young was Bloody Mary, and although I shot myself, she didn't appear, so there's that. Let me know if you guys have played any of these games before, or if you want to try after this. As always, I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and I'll catch you in the next one. You know, if you survive the game you choose to play. Bye!